Hello everyone, this is a video on the Holland White interest rate one factor model, which is a no arbitrage model for interest rates. This chapter has been introduced in FRM part two, uh, market risk module. And this chapter uses a lot of mathematical results and it can be frustrating for the FRM students because there is not much proof or explanations given in the text. Now to understand all the maths involved, one needs to know stochastic calculus and it's kind of unfortunate that you don't have stochastic calculus in your curriculum. Now working with term structure models without knowing stochastic calculus is like eating pizza with the toppings alone and no cheese. Anyways, the Hull and White model is extremely popular in practice and we must know the underlying principles. So the purpose of this video is to peek under the hood of this model and derive a few results uh, given in the text so you can appreciate the topic a whole lot and it will give you more confidence in general and from the exam perspective. Before we start, a quick refresher on equilibrium models versus no arbitrage models. Equilibrium models such as the Vasicek model describe the general behavior of interest rates such as mean reversion or stationarity and the parameters are estimated based on long-term behavior of interest rates. Now, Vasicek model describes the dynamics uh, of the short rate. If you recall, the short rate at time t is the spot rate at that time for an infinitesimal maturity. Now, from the short rate dynamics, it is possible to derive the price of zero coupon bonds uh, analytically in this case. And hence, we can derive the spot rate curve or the term structure. Now, the kinds of term structures that come out of Vasicek model are way too simplistic. After all, we only have just three parameters. We have theta, we have A, which is the speed of mean reversion, and we have sigma. With different values of these three parameters, we can only generate simple term structure shapes like this. And let's say, Today we observe a term structure which we derive from the liquid securities and we got this shape. Now equilibrium models such as the Vasicek model or uh, Cox Singer Salras do not have the flexibility or richness to generate these kinds of esoteric term structure shapes. After all there are just three parameters you can play with. Does that mean that the zero coupon bonds today are wrongly priced? Well, in real life, there are many, many factors that affect the shape of a term structure on a given day. And equilibrium models cannot explain the richness in the shapes. As we said before, equilibrium models are a theoretical construct. So we need a model that has infinite flexibility to fit any kind of term structure on a given day. Well, for that, we cannot have infinite number of parameters, obviously. So what we do instead is to is make one or more parameters time dependent. That's what Ho and Lee did. So they proposed a time varying drift parameter, theta t, um, and it was the first no arbitrage model proposed. Now in contrast to equilibrium models where we theorize a term structure as the output of uh, the model, no arbitrage models take the prevailing term structure as the input to the model and then we calibrate or back out the time dependence of the drift parameter in this case theta t. So in no arbitrage models we assume that the price of the liquid instruments such as zero coupon bonds to be correct and hence the term structure is the source of truth and then we back out theta t. So now we have a model that correctly prices the zero coupon bonds. As per this model, you cannot do arbitrage because it matches the model price with the market price for the liquid securities. Now what? So now we can price complex derivatives or exotics using the no arbitrage model. The whole point of doing this was to have a model that correctly prices the liquid securities and then use that model to price complex derivatives. After all, if the model does not price the liquid securities correctly, then how can we even trust the price of the derivatives that we generate from the model, right? So that's the quick background uh, for um, 
between the difference between the equilibrium models and the no arbitrage models. Um, the model that we'll focus on in this video is the Hull and White one factor model, which is really the Vasicek model with a time varying theta. All right. A quick refresher on short rate versus the instantaneous forward rate. So a short rate RT is the instantaneous spot rate at time t. It means right now if you are at time 0, when you get to a time t in future, what will be the prevailing spot rate then for a tiny tiny maturity dt? That's the short rate. Until you get to t, you will never know what it is. So at time 0, rt is a random quantity. The Vasicek model or the Holy model or the Hull and White model that we just discussed model this short rate dynamics. All right. Now the instantaneous forward rate at time zero, please note the keyword at time zero. This is denoted as F zero comma T, which is basically the rate applicable to a very tiny uh, period dt in future from time t to time t plus dt but as seen today okay this rate is available at time zero where we are right now so we observe f zero t all right and there are instruments trading right now on this forward rate so you can uh, also calculate it uh, using no arbitrage arguments as a as a rate that is um, sandwiched between two spot rates Okay, which are available today. That is for maturity t and maturity t plus dt. All right, we can we can derive the uh, uh, forward rate uh, through no arbitrage argument using these two spot rates which are available today. So long story short, this forward rate f zero comma t is known. Okay, it's not random. However, if we contemplate this same forward rate at a future time. That is, if we get to a time t dash in future, then what will be the forward rate between time t to t plus dt as seen from t dash? That will be random. All right. It is not seen today. It will be seen when you get to t dash. So as of now, this forward rate will be a, a random variable. So we model this instantaneous forward rate in HJM framework. But that is really not the focus of this video. This is just for your information. Before we jump into the model, here are some basic uh, formulas that we must know. Now, these formulas are useful when the interest rates are stochastic. Now, I'm not going to derive uh, these formulas for the purpose of this video, but let me know in the comments if you would like me to do so. I will make another video. And it, in the derivation really involves some fun stuff like fundamental asset pricing theorem, change of numerator expectation under risk neutral pricing etc anyway so the price of a zero coupon bond um, at time small t that pays one dollar at time capital t is linked to the spot rate prevailing uh, in the, in that period this formula must be known to you it's it's pretty straightforward so y t comma t is the spot rate between uh, uh, available at time t and with a maturity uh, capital t minus small t the instantaneous forward rate is linked to the zero coupon bond price. All right. The instantaneous forward rate at time small t uh, is given by the derivative of log of bond price with respect to the capital T. Um, you might think, uh, wait, so the capital T is fixed. How can it uh, vary, right? We are talking about differentiation with respect to capital T. Well, if it helps, think of this as the difference in log prices of the two zero coupon bonds whose maturities differ only by an instant. All right. That will be in the numerator and then divided by the delta or the difference between the maturities of the two very adjacent zero coupon bonds. Okay. And the last equation is the price of zero coupon bond in terms of short rate. Okay. So in the first equation, we talked about the linkage between the zero coupon bond and the spot rates, which is very straightforward. In the second equation, we talked about the link between zero coupon bond price and the instantaneous forward rates. And now we are talking about the link between zero coupon bond price and the short rate. 
So this is given as the conditional expectation of an integral uh, of the short rate under the risk neutral measure. Under the Holy model or even the Hull and White model, we can analytically derive the time dependence structure for theta t. Now one method to derive this is to first use the short rate dynamics in the model to obtain the risk neutral price for the zero coupon bond using equation 3. Then we use equation 2 to eliminate the zero coupon bond price because that's common between these two equations and establish a link between the short rate model parameters and the instantaneous forward rate. All right. And the instantaneous forward rate is uh, tied to the term structure that we are seeing today. Okay. So if we are doing this exercise for small t equal to zero, that is for today, then the instantaneous forward rate will be known from the term structure uh, that is available today. And we would know the exact time dependence for theta t today. So here are the analytical results for Holy model and Hull and White model. This is the time varying theta calibrated to today's term structure. So basically, small t is equal to zero here and capital T is replaced by small t. Okay. Why do we need two parameters? We don't because right, we are calibrating theta t right now. So small t becomes zero and capital T is just small t. Um, so don't get confused. And this makes our model a no arbitrage model because the model output prices of zero coupon bonds will match the market prices of zero coupon bonds. In fact, we use the market price of zero coupon bonds, which is reflected in the term structure to calibrate our drift in the first place. All right. <clears throat> now, our no arbitrage model for today is complete and we are ready to price uh, complex instruments using this model. Tomorrow, the market prices will be different. So the term structure will be different and we will have to recalibrate our theta again. Okay, so I'm going to derive the result for the Holy uh, model. So you can see uh, the steps. For Hull and White model, the steps are no different. Only the integrals are a little more involved and the equations are longer. So I leave that uh, as an exercise for you. So to start off, let's do a little bit of uh, stochastic calculus. Now, you don't need it for FRM, but uh, once you land in a job, uh, let's say in market risk or derivative valuation kind of uh, uh, profile, then uh, then your ETOS calculus or stochastic calculus knowledge has to be uh, really advanced. So anyways, let's do some basic maths. So to start off, we know that uh, DWT is normally distributed with mean zero and variance DT. If we take the integral of dWt from 0 to capital T, so that is essentially, um, so if we look, uh, look at the timeline, 0, small t, capital T, dWt is a, a normal random, that's dWt, which has a mean 0 and variance dt, okay? <clears throat> so if we take the integral of d, uh, dWt from 0 to t, uh, in all uh, integrals in stochastic calculus, we essentially look at the integrals as uh, discrete sums, okay? So this is nothing but we are adding bunch of normal randoms, okay? So if we add the normal uh, random variables within this timeline from 0 to capital T, we will get another normal random. The means will get added up, so uh, it will be 0, all right? This is this integral is basically a sum, and that sum will have an uh, will will follow the normal distribution with mean zero, and the variances will get added up, right? When we add two normal vari variables, what happens? The means get added up, and the variances also get added up, provided they are not correlated. So here also, uh, if you look at different time zones, so this is one time zone, d w t one happened at time t one. And then another time zone dW t2 happen at time t2. So these uh, dWs are not correlated. Okay. So we can just add the variances. So if we add the variances all the way from 0 to capital T, this will just be capital T. All right. So integral dWt is normal uh, with mean 0 variance 
capital T. And how did we get uh, capital T? This is nothing but integral of dt from 0 to t. Okay. In discrete sense, we should add in continuous domain, it will be integration. And here, all we are doing is um, adding up the variances. All right. Now, so this is a number one, number two. Number three, if we have a constant multiplied with dWt, integral 0 to t, then what will happen? This is also easy. It's not uh, difficult. This will also be normally distributed with mean 0. But when we take variance, the so variance of these individual terms will be sigma square dt, right? So if we add all these sigma square dt's, eventually we'll get sigma square capital T. So this again, it comes from uh, sigma square dt integral 0 to capital T. Okay. Next is, if we have a um, deterministic function, so a function which is time dependent, ft times dwt, if we integrate this from 0 to t, then what happens? So here, this is basically we are scaling the dwt at time t by a known function at time t. So this ft is not random, that is deterministic, some kind of time dependent function only, okay? Now, if we look at this uh, same diagram, so 0, t, capital T, dwt is a random normal uh, that occurs at time t, and we scale that with a deterministic component f of t, all right? Clearly, um, if we take expectation of this ft times dwt, Um, that will be equal to uh, 0 because ft will come outside and expectation of dwt is uh, 0. This will come outside because f of t has no randomness in it. Okay. If we take variance of uh, f of t dwt, so f of t will come as square. Okay. Simple variance algebra. Then variance of dwt and that is equal to what is the variance of dwt? dt. All right. So this is the variance of this uh, small element. If we take integration from 0 to capital T, the variances will get added up. So this item is again normally distributed with mean 0 and variance will be integral from 0 to capital T of f square t dt. All right. So yeah, that's all. These are the basic uh, manipulations in uh, Ito's world, Ito calculus, Ito calculus, or stochastic calculus that uh, you should be familiar with. And to do more advanced stuff, you need to know um, Taylor series, Ito's lemma and everything. But this should be good, good enough to get you started. At least for the purpose of this video, uh, we should be good. So now let's try to derive the analytical formula for uh, the time varying drift theta t under Holy's model. So Holy model gives me the dynamics for short rate dr. So here is my strategy from dr I will integrate to get r and then on r I will do another integration to get integral r dt. Why do I need this? I need this because the price of my zero coupon bond uh, maturing at cap time capital T paying $1 is linked to the short rate. So price of a zero coupon bond is the expectation under risk neutral density of this quantity. This is what we saw uh, previously, right? Um, yeah. So in this expression, I need an integral uh, I need the integral for RT. So that's why I need to first get R then do integral RDT. Once I get the zero coupon bond price uh, linked to the um, model for short rates, right? Then I can use uh, this formula that we just discussed. This is linked to the instantaneous forward rate. 
all right so from zero coupon bond price i will differentiate with respect to capital t and whatever i get that will have these model parameters theta and sigma and everything will be linked to the instantaneous forward rate which is again uh, is uh, tied to our term structure okay so from there, I will back out theta t and I'll have an expression, analytical expression for theta t. So that's my strategy. So, so let's uh, go step by step. <clears throat> now, since I need to do integration two times, between time zero to capital T, let me consider two local time variables, u and small t. All right, this will help me do the uh, two steps uh, integration. Okay, so holy model, what is holy model? holy model is given as so let me work uh, at the local time variable u dr u is equal to theta u du plus sigma dw at u okay now let me integrate uh, both sides with uh, from 0 to small t so small u goes from 0 to t 0 to t 0 to t 0 to t, zero to t. Left hand side is straightforward. This is simply RT minus R0. Okay. After I apply the limits. This uh, I don't know. Okay. This is what I'm trying to determine. So I don't know the dependence of theta on time. So I'll just keep it as is for now. Plus sigma is constant will come out and let me keep this as is as well for now. Okay. So I get the dynamics for my short rate at time t as this initial short rate r0 plus these two quantities all right now i'll do the uh, second stage integration so let me call it uh, for convenience let me call it i i is equal to integral rt dt from 0 to capital t I forgot the limits here. This is this is zero to capital T. Okay, so this is equal to integral r zero dt from zero to capital T plus. It will be a double integral. This integration we already had zero to small t theta u du zero to capital T dt. Okay, so the second integration is happening with respect to small t that goes from 0 to capital T plus the third term sigma this integration was already there dw u then integral dt 0 to capital T okay so u goes from 0 to small t and small t goes from 0 to capital T okay now I can um, do a little bit of simplification so this is r0 capital T plus I have to keep the second term as is du dt plus this can be simplified further but it requires little more little intuition so what is happening here is if you look at the outer sum so integral is again you have to look it as look it as a sum there are two uh, levels of sum we are doing. There is an outer sum and there is an inner sum. The outer sum is with respect to small t. Small t goes from 0 to capital T. The inner sum is wherever small t is, we are taking u from 0 to that small t. That's the inner sum. Okay. Now, in the when small t goes from 0 to capital T, it aggregates all the dw's um, uh, before it it aggregates all the dw's before it okay so that means if i want to give you a, a dummy example so let's say dw1 happened here dw2 happened here this is dw3 like that so small t goes from zero all the way to capital t let's say small t is here okay so look at the inner sum the inner sum aggregates dw's from 0 to small t that means when I when small t is here it will pick up dw1 and let's say also dw2 but not dw3 it's not there yet okay 
when small t moves from here to here, then again it will pick up dw1, dw2 and dw3. Alright? So that is what is happening. Okay? So in that process, every dw gets included for what length of time? Every dw, so if in general dw is happening at u, that is our variable, right? This dw will be counted how many times? This will be included for the remaining interval. So dw u will be included for this interval u to t. It will never come if t small t is before uh, this particular u. Okay. Once t travels from 0 to capital T, it starts including all the dw's before it. Okay. So a particular dw happening at time u will be included for t minus u length of time. Okay. So I can uh, rewrite this as sigma. I'll remove one integration and write this as 0 to capital T, T minus U, DW, U. Okay. So that's my I. That I is what? I is just R D integral R D, uh, RT DT from 0 to capital T. Now let's talk about the expectation and variance of I. Okay. Expectation of I is equal to, if you look at I, there are three terms these three terms the first two are one this is constant okay r0 is known capital D is known the second one is time dependent but there is no randomness in it theta is a function of time everything is a function of time it's an integration with respect to time so it's just time dependent there is no randomness in it in it right so when we take expectation the these are just this will uh, be uh, remain as is so r0 t plus uh, double integral 0 to t 0 to capital T du dt. That's my expectation. Why the expectation of this quantity is 0? That is what we saw just now, right? Ito integrals have an expectation of 0. This is a deterministic uh, time dependent term which uh, scales the um, Brownian increments and expectation of each dw is 0. So the overall expectation of this uh, integral is zero. So this is my expectation. What is the variance? Variance will come from only this term, right? The first two terms are constant or deterministic. So the variance, again, uh, remember we just discussed that if the dw is scaled by a time dependent function, then it comes as the uh, square and dw becomes dt. So that is exactly what we will do here. So variance would be sigma square okay sigma is the constant so it will come as sigma square when we take variance integral 0 to t the time dependent function square of that right times replace dw u by du du is the variance of dw all right and this is uh, just comes out as a square okay so we uh, let's evaluate this so sigma square integral of this would be t minus u um, cube divided by 3. Now there will be a there is a minus u term so I will have to reverse the limits from t to 0 okay and this is equal to if I re, uh, replace the values of u upper limit and the lower limit then I get sigma square t cube by 3. Okay, so we got the expectation and variance of i and what is y? i, i is the integral of rt dt. We are almost there, okay? Now we need to find out the expectation of e to the power minus i. e to the power minus i. Okay, so if i, note that i is a Ito integral, right? It has, uh, it, it will follow a normal distribution. Okay, with this expectation and this variance, it will follow a normal distribution. So I follows normal distribution with this mean and this variance. Then minus I will follow normal distribution. Mean will become negative, but variance will remain same. 
okay what is what do i need i need expectation of e to the power minus i expectation of e to the power minus i so expectation of e to the power minus i now we know that if i is normal or rather minus i is normal then e to the power that will be log normal so this is log normal other way of saying this is that if something is log normal then log of that is normal so here we are using uh, we're stating it in the reverse way if something is normal e to the power that is log normal with the same parameters parameters do not change and we just need so we have to take out expectation here we're talking on distribution anyway so if we have something as log normal what is the expectation or mean of log normal distribution the expectation uh, or mean of log normal is given by e to the power so let me give you the formula if x is normal with mean mu variance sigma square uh, then e to the power x is log normal with the same parameters but the mean of e to the power x would be e to the power mu plus half sigma square okay this is standard result you can check in wikipedia or uh, any standard textbook so expectation of this log normal distribution will be e to the power mean which is this plus half of variance which is this okay now so this is the price of the zero coupon bond this is the price of the zero coupon bond so let's simplify Um, we can write this as 0 coupon bond price is e to the power this thing minus ei plus half vi so I can directly write um, log of the 0 coupon bond I just want to remove that uh, e so log of zero coupon bond price is equal to minus <coughs> uh, ei what is expectation of i expectation of i is this one so this is equal to minus r0 t minus integral 0 to t 0 to t theta u du dt um, and plus half of variance half of vi is simply sigma square t cube divided by 6 now i'm almost there so i need to take minus del by del t of this quantity this is nothing but my instantaneous forward rate okay so that is equal to uh, we get uh, r0 plus this is the derivative with respect to capital T so we apply Leibniz theorem or Leibniz theorem uh, if you are not familiar uh, please uh, check out Wikipedia uh, it's pretty straightforward so here this is this part we are integrating a quantity with respect to T the limit goes from 0 to capital T right if you want to differentiate under the integral the way we do it is replace small t with capital T um, and then the derivative of the upper limit minus replace small t with capital T times derivative of the lower limit derivative of the lower limit uh, is um, 0 so second term will vanish so all we'll get is simply um, t replaced by upper limit times derivative of upper limit uh, upper limit is capital T so derivative of that with respect to capital T is 1 so we don't need anything else so this is pretty much it okay and then minus so note that I have uh, put a minus sign here so everything is mine uh, I'm taking minus on the right hand side as well r0 plus this minus if I differentiate this once with respect to capital T what should I get it will be 3t squared on top so I'll get sigma square t square divided by 2 
all right okay so from here i get so this is my focus right i want to find out the value of theta so this is equal to minus r0 plus instantaneous forward rate plus sigma square t square y2 one more step one last step differentiate this again with respect to capital t so this integral will vanish if i again leibniz theorem so if i uh, differentiate with respect to capital t on both sides u replaced by upper limit times upper limits derivative is 1 and then lower limits derivative is 0 so this is just theta t this is equal to constant the so differentiation is 0 i get partial derivative with respect to capital t of the instantaneous forward rate and then plus sigma square t okay okay choice of capital t is arbitrary it was just a variable right and i'm calculating i will be eventually calculating everything at time t equal to zero so uh, i'll be looking at different times in future and small t is gonna be my controlling variable the only variable that i need so i'll just replace capital t with small t okay for convenience so theta t is del by del t of f zero t plus sigma square t this is the um, analytical formula for time varying drift that is calibrated to the term structure okay term once you get the term structure you can calculate the instantaneous forward rate uh, curve as well so this is how the theta t in holy model is linked to the um, instantaneous forward rate or the term structure the change in short rate follows a normal distribution the mean of the normal distribution is given by the drift term and the variance of the normal distribution is linked to the stochastic component uh, sigma dw right okay uh, let's understand the interpretation of theta t under the uh, two models that we discussed holy and hull and white so under holy model we got this analytical expression for theta t now if we ignore this term sigma square t which is small then theta t terms uh, turns out to be the slope of the instantaneous forward curve okay so dr is theta t times dt okay the average change um, or the average value of dr is given by theta t okay we forget about dt for now dt is uh, same so the change in uh, so the dr is given by the slope of the forward curve that means it does not depend on where the short rate is right now okay so if you look at this uh, diagram the short rate can be below the uh, instantaneous forward curve uh, at time uh, which is observed at time uh, zero or it could be above does not matter the next dr that is coming on an average will be equal to the slope of the forward curve uh, at that point okay um so that's it it does not matter whether uh, r is above or below the forward curve and of course uh, the overall dr will have the stochastic component we are talking about the average change okay uh, it is a normal distribution so there will be this sigma dw term on top of that but the average value of dr will be equal to the slope of the instantaneous forward curve and it does not depend on whether the short rate is above or below the uh, instantaneous forward curve if we go to hull and white model again uh, we'll ignore this uh, last uh, term then the value of the the value of dr um, the average value of dr is given by the slope of instantaneous forward curve plus an added component and that add on is speed of mean reversion a times the gap between the instantaneous forward curve and the short rate so here d the average value of dr will depend on where the short rate is relative to the uh, forward curve okay so if you look at this picture uh, slope is the baseline okay on top of that if the is, um, short rate is below the forward curve then this gap is positive right so the average value of dr will be more than the slope of the forward curve 
Similarly, if it is above the forward curve, then the average value of dr will be a uh, slope and then the, the add-on will become negative because r is above, right? So f minus uh, r would be negative. So the average value of dr will be um, less than the slope of the forward curve. So think like this, the forward curve acts like a magnet, okay? So there is an additional force to bring the short rate close closer to the forward curve. That's it. All right. So under these two models, Holy and Hull and White, we do have analytical formula to price zero coupon bonds. And also we have the analytical formula for theta t. However, when it comes to pricing uh, exotics, right, or complex instruments such as American options, we really don't have an analytical solution. Okay, we have to either resort to um, simulation methods such as Monte Carlo, or we have to resort to numerical solutions such as uh, finite difference methods or tree-based algorithms. Okay, so. When it comes to tree-based algorithm, if we build sufficient number of branches, then tree-based algorithms are not bad at all. Okay, we can even price American options using the uh, trees, and we have seen that before. So, when it comes to interest rate modeling, let's consider a trinomial branch. Okay, now a trinomial branch is like a binomial branch, but with one extra degree of freedom. Binomial tree models only uh, model the up movement and down movements. Okay, trinomial tree, in addition to these two states, also consider a state where there is no movement at all, and this makes trinomial models more suitable for quantities such as interest rates, which uh, exhibit mean reversion which are basically stationary or stable quantities, okay? If we, if we want to model stock price, it makes sense uh, that because stock price is unbounded. But if we are modeling something which is stationary uh, and shows mean reversion like uh, interest rates, more often than not, interest rates do not change from time to time. So we want to include a state where the interest rates do not change at all from one time to another. So we are modeling three possibilities. Okay, so one is up, uh, then middle, then down. So there are three possibilities and uh, the up move size and the down move size are uh, taken as equal, which is delta R. And we have to calibrate these three probabilities. So we let's say the prob three probabilities associated with the three movements are given, are given as PU, PM and PD, uh, which stand for the up move, middle and down move respectively. And these three probabilities will have to be calibrated um, by um, matching the uh, prevailing market price of zero coupon bonds. Okay, so we'll see how to do that. So we have to calibrate these risk neutral probabilities. Now, this is called as standard branching. All right, now to enforce mean reversion, if interest rates are too high or too low, then we can use something called as non-standard branching where we will restrict the interest rates going further away from its long-term mean all right so to give you an example in high interest rate scenario we want the states to be uh, either constant or down by uh, one factor or down by two factors as in in this diagram this will prevent the interest rates to go up even further all right we are trying to drag the interest rate back to its mean level similarly in case of low interest rate uh, environment we want to probably have uh, uh, these kind of states right constant up by one factor up by two factors okay this non-standard branching uh, will kick in when the interest rates are uh, either too high or too low and we'll see what's the criteria uh, to switch from standard branching to non-standard branching uh, later on all right, so now let's talk about the tree building procedure. Hull and White suggest a two-stage approach. In stage one, we build the tree for a different variable R star that follows a different dynamics than R. The difference is that this new process R star has a long run average of zero, okay? If you notice the dynamics, uh, all we have done is basically we have set theta t equals to zero. 
we also assume that uh, at time t equal to 0 the initial value of r star is 0 all right so we first as part of stage 1 we build a baseline tree for this new variable r star and then as part of stage 2 we would generate the tree for r which was our original short rate by shifting the nodes of r star and we do that by adding um, alpha okay which depends only on time all right so basically if you see the difference between r and r star right is only time dependent because the stochastic term cancels out all right to uh, explain you more concretely so here are the dynamics of r and r star now we have alpha given as the difference between r and r star okay this is this alpha that we will add to the uh, r star tree to get the tree for r okay and we are claiming that alpha is only time dependent and that is true because it doesn't have any randomness the stochastic term cancels out um, in fact if we plug in the analytical value of theta t under hull white model uh, which we saw a bit earlier we will get this nice formula for the evolution of alpha t okay and i will derive this uh, shortly so all we are saying is build the tree for r star then shift the nodes of r star by alpha t to generate the tree for r and this alpha t will only depend on what time step you are operating at it will it has no randomness of its own okay and we'll prove uh, uh, derive this analytical result so if we build a model for r star then we can just shift all the nodes of r star by alpha t to get the tree for r to give you a visual understanding of this um, let's say we built a two-step trinomial tree for r star okay we will now shift the first node by alpha 0 then we will shift all the nodes at time delta t which is one time step after by the same um, alpha applicable at time delta t okay so we'll shift all the nodes uh, on the first time step by the same alpha and that alpha will depend on uh, the value delta t okay and uh, we do the same um, so we will shift all the nodes at time 2 delta by the same alpha applicable for time 2 delta okay um, and so on and why because the difference between r and r star is only time dependent not state dependent okay but how to find these alphas so we have built a tree for r star all we need to do is find the values of uh, alpha at different time steps and just add add to generate the tree for r okay but how to find these alphas well we could discretize uh, the analytical formula that we have for alpha uh, uh, directly uh, but if we do that then the resulting tree for r may not exactly match the zero coupon bond prices so instead hull and white propose to iteratively calculate alpha t and get the tree for r in such a way that it uh, exactly matches the zero coupon bond prices and we will see that um, one more important assumption in this whole argument is although we are working with short rate dynamics which theoretically is only applicable for a infinitesimal period on a tree when we are working in discrete time steps right which would be actually much larger than the infinitesimal time step uh, meaning that all the d's that we have dr dt and everything will be replaced by delta right dt will become delta t dr will become delta r however we still assume that the delta r follows the same dynamics as the short rate okay so if we implement it on a tree it's really not the short rate anymore it's not the instantaneous spot rate it's actually the rates ac applicable for a maturity delta t but still we assume that it follows the same dynamics as the short rates this is one important distinction that we have to remember 
Okay, so there is one more analytical formula, uh, which is the alpha t. Um, so let's derive that, although we'll not use that analytical formula to discretize alpha t, but let's uh, derive that for uh, the sake of clarity, okay? So the um, dynamics for drt is theta t minus a r dt plus sigma dw and dynamics for dr star t is minus a r star dt plus sigma dw okay and we defined alpha t as the um, r t minus R star T. So if we just uh, take the difference of these two, we get differential of R T minus R star T is equal to theta T DT minus A times R minus R star DT. And these two terms, as we discussed before, cancels out. Um, and we are calling this as alpha, right? So this is d alpha t is equal to theta t dt minus a alpha t dt. Again, we are getting a, fi a nice uh, first order differential equation for uh, alpha t. There, is, there are no stochastic terms anywhere in this equation. Everything is just a deterministic function. They depend on time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so take the um, alpha t on both uh, on, onto the left hand side. So we can do d alpha by dt plus a alpha t is equal to uh, theta t. All right. Now, as per Hull and White model, the theta t, so we saw the uh, derivation for theta t under um, Holy model. Similarly, for Hull and White, you can derive the analytical expression for theta t. And uh, it is given as slope of instantaneous forward a times f of 0t plus sigma square by 2a 1 minus e to the power minus 2at okay all right so he, we can again rearrange these uh, so both of these are derivative with respect to t so let's combine that so derivative with respect to t of this quantity alpha t minus f0t plus a times alpha t minus f zero t so f of zero comma t is equal to this okay this is a, in a very nice uh, first order differential uh, uh, equation uh, format if we consider this as the uh, variable uh, y okay so again the integrating factor will be e to the power at okay so i'm i can directly write this as um, if i if i just multiply e to the power at on both sides on the left hand side it will be a derivative of e to the power at alpha t minus f zero comma t all right this this will be the uh, this will match the left hand side so I have already multiplied e to the power at on um, both sides and the right hand side will become sigma square by 2a e to the power at minus e to the power minus at. All right. Um, just uh, pause the video if you would like and uh, verify this uh, equation. It's the same as above. So now if I integrate um, I will get so I just have to integrate the right hand side if I integrate the left hand side I'll get this one back 
e to the power a t alpha t minus f zero t is equal to sigma square by two a integration of e to the power a t minus e to the power minus a t dt from zero to t. So this is equal to sigma square by two a Um, the integration of e to the a t will be e to the a t divided by a. Again, here also I'll have a, a, so I'll take a outside. It will be two a square, and uh, this is nothing but. If I put the upper limit, it will be e to the power a t minus e to the power minus a t. Uh, this will become plus because. Uh, when I take uh, so integration of this will be e to the power minus a t divided by minus a, right? So the minus minus will become plus. When I put upper limit t, it will be this much. When I put lower limit, remember e to the power zero is not zero, so it's one, right? Um, so this will be minus one and another minus one, so minus two. Okay, so this uh, is equal to, so now if I simplify alpha t minus f of 0 t is equal to, I'll take the um, e to the power a t to the other side. So I'll get sigma square by 2 a uh, 1 plus e to the power minus 2 a t minus 2 e to the power minus a t. Now if you recognize this is in form of a minus b whole square. Uh, I forgot a uh, square here. Sigma square by 2 a square. And this is 1 minus e to the power minus a t whole square. Okay. So I get the analytical expression for alpha t, although I will not use it. But this is the time dependence of alpha and this is what the nodes of R star must be shifted uh, to generate the tree for R. So alpha t is equal to f of 0 t plus times 1 minus e to the power minus a t whole square. Uh, please note that there is a, a printing mistake in the text given to you, this factor is in the numerator, it's not in the denominator. So that's all. All right. So to construct a tree, we have to specify the probabilities of uh, movements and also the size of movements, right? So we can either fix the probabilities and tune the size factors, or we can fix the size factors and tune the probabilities. In our case, we have a trinomial tree and we will fix the up, middle and down movement sizes and then tune the probabilities such that the expectation and variance on a given branch matches the theoretical result for a single time step. Okay, that's the standard procedure. Okay, so the expectation uh, of delta R dash, remember we are in stage one, we are still working with uh, R star, not R. So expectation of delta R star is given by this expression. Uh, this is a theoretical result and I will derive it uh, shortly. So we'll, let's write this as M times R star where M is this uh, factor. Now note that M is actually a constant. It is not time dependent. Although we have delta T in this expression, but delta T is just our choice of the time step, which is constant. Okay, it's not T, it's delta T. So m is constant. So expectation is given by a constant factor m times uh, the level of uh, R star. Okay. Similarly, the variance is given by this. Uh, let's call it uh, V, capital V. I will derive these results uh, shortly. Now in the tree, the up movement, uh, the up move and the down move sizes should be aligned to the volatility, right? R higher the volatility, higher should be, like the further apart should be the up move and the down move factors. 
So the up move size and the down move size are always tied to the volatility of the process. So for convenience, we will uh, take delta R star as square root of 3V. This is just a matter of convenience and we will fix that. Now let's um, understand the tree nomenclature a little, little bit. So let's say after I time steps, okay, R star reaches a node that is J times delta R star, okay, above the starting value, which is zero, okay, zero is the um, uh, mean. And then right now we are considering uh, after I time steps, the X coordinate will be I delta T, right? And the Y coordinate could be J times delta R star. See, delta R star is the size of one movement, either up or down. And then after a series of up and down movements, finally its location in terms of Y coordinate is J times delta R star, okay? And J of course can be positive, negative, also zero. Okay, so, uh, all right, so now let me derive the theoretical expectation and variance uh, for uh, delta R star in a single time step, uh, delta T. So let's uh, derive the expectation and variance for uh, delta R star. Okay, so this is the dynamics for R star. D R star is equal to minus A R star dt plus sigma dw okay and uh, so this is r star at time t then at time t plus delta t r star becomes something else right r star plus delta r star our goal is to find out the expectation of delta r star and the variance of delta r star so that we can calibrate the probabilities on the tree to match the um, branch dynamics with the population dynamics okay now um, if the so this equation is in continuous domain right continuous time domain um, if it is if the time safe is very 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 small then we can see the expectation is only this much, right? This is this has expectation of zero. So we can say the expectation of uh, dr. But here is the thing: we are not uh, working with infinitesimal time step. We are working with del time step delta t, which is much larger than the theoretical idea. But still, if we take expectation, this is minus a r star. Uh, dt and we can approximate so remember we said this is uh, m times r star so here m is approximately minus a delta t this will work if again you know delta t is extremely small but uh, let's derive the exact value of the expectation and variance if delta t is not small and then we can approximate if delta t tends to zero what happens right we can do that later on so let's see. Uh, so looking at this dynamics, I can do one thing. I can take the R star term on one side. This is equal to sigma dw. Now this is uh, this looks like a first order differential equation. Okay. So the standard trick is to multiply the integrating factors. So here a is the constant. So typically we do this integrating factor is equal to e to the power integration adx okay that is something we multiply on uh, both sides so here it is simple it will be e to the power at that we need to multiply so when we multiply e to the power at now we take integration The reason I put this hole in bracket is because if you look carefully, this is the integration of um, r star e to the power at. Okay, this is the uh, differential of this quantity. Uh, you can check. 
and that is the beauty of integrating factor it's designed in such a way that this will become an exact differential uh, this goes from okay so what is the integrating uh, what is the what are the limits we are going from t to t plus delta t right t to t plus delta t t to t plus delta t sigma comes outside and we have integral t to t plus delta t a time dependent function e to the power at times a stochastic uh, component dw okay so this can be simplified further this is an exact differential so all we, so this is the integration will be only this much and then we have to apply the upper limit and then uh, minus the uh, lower limit so in the um, t at time t plus delta t this quantity would be r star plus delta r star right times um, e to the power a t plus delta t right so we have replaced t with t plus delta t and at that point r star would be r star plus delta r star minus at the bottom uh, it will be just uh, r star e to the power a t is equal to um, this integral sigma e to the power a t dw from t to t plus delta t okay now we can uh, take e to the power a t common so this is r star plus delta r star e to the power delta t rather a delta t minus r star whole into e to the power at that is equal to this integral sigma e to the power at dw t to t plus delta t okay now in this equation we can take expectation and variance okay so if we take expectation on both sides we know that the expectation on the of the right hand side is zero right so right side will be zero on the left side it will be so what are the things that are known the everything at time t is known okay the random variable is delta r star how much r star will change that is not known r star is known this is a constant anyways r star is known this is constant uh, because we know time t and everything the only thing that is non not uh, known and random is delta r star and we are taking expectation of that so if you take take expectation on both sides this term will just uh, get absorbed uh, on the right hand side because the right hand side is zero so we don't have to bother about that so we will get r star e to the power a delta t plus e to the power a delta t expectation of delta r star okay please uh, feel free to pause the video if you need to confirm the calculations so this part is constant and we are taking expectation of delta r star is equal to uh, r star right uh, because the right hand term uh, right hand side is zero uh, the expectation of the right hand side is zero so just rearranging we get expectation of delta r star is equal to r star uh, times 1 minus e to the power a delta t then this will go to the right hand side as e to the power minus a delta t so here we get r star times e to the power minus a delta t minus 1 okay and this is equal to m times r star where m is equal to e to the power minus a delta t minus 1 now this can be approximated if delta t tends to 0 then e to the power x is 1 plus x right so 1 1 will get cancelled we get minus a delta t this is what we had earlier okay so this uh, proves the expect uh, the formula that's given for expectation now let's take the variance so when we take variance 
um, let's do one thing from this equation let's isolate the things that are constant and deterministic so that the, the variance would just drop to zero and let's only work with the terms that are random okay so if i rewrite this r star e to the power a delta t minus r star whole into e to the power at okay this much is the constant term and then we have a random term which is associated with delta r star uh, into e to the power a t plus delta t that is equal to sigma the right hand side t to t plus delta t e to the power a t dw okay so we get this equation all right now let's take variance on both sides the variance of this thing is zero the variance of this would be e to the power this the constant term will come out as a square right so 2 a t plus delta t variance of delta r star what is the variance of this the variance would be sigma square would come out and then um, we need the integration of remember if we have a deterministic function it comes as a square e to the power 2 a t then d t uh, from t to t plus delta t one second okay so how much is this so this is equal to integration of e to the power 280 for that we need a, a, a factor 2a divided like this and integration of e to the power x is e to the power x so i'm directly writing with the upper limit and lower limit so it's e to the power 2a t plus delta t minus e to the power um, 280 okay so this is equal to sigma square by 2a so on the left hand side we have this quantity uh, multiplied right so let's extract that so we can just cancel it out so it's 2a t plus delta t right then 1 minus e to the power it will be so 280 is uh, common here right so it will be just uh, 2a delta t okay feel free to pause the video and confirm the calculations now now we can rest so this term will get cancelled so now we have variance of delta r star is equal to sigma square by 2a times um, 1 minus e to the power uh, so if okay so when we take this common it will be 2a t then it should be minus here yeah minus 2a delta t okay so that's the variance and we are calling it as capital v okay so we needed m and we need a, needed v and we are ready for um, constructing the tree for r dash all right so the next thing we want to do is calibrate the probabilities for the state transitions in a given branch so that the expectation and variance as per the branch dynamics matches with the theoretical results that we just derived so let's focus on a node which has the coordinate i delta t comma j delta r star 
So we have different results for standard and non-standard uh, branchings. Okay. Um, note that the probabilities at different nodes only depend on J. So let me derive the result for the standard branching case and then you can try the same for the non-standard branching ones. Okay, so now let's go through the uh, probability calibration procedure. So we have R star and then three states R star plus delta R star R star remains as R star then it goes down by same delta R star and delta R star is square root of 3v that was our choice uh, it's just convenience and these probabilities are p up p middle p down okay and we found the expectation of delta r star so this is a one step increment expectation of that was uh, m r star and the variance of this delta r star was v all right now as per the uh, tree what is the expectation of delta r star expectation of delta r star star in the tree so in this tree there are three discrete states right here the change is delta r star here the change is minus delta r star and here the delta r star is basically zero there is no change there so the expectation is p up times delta r star and minus p down times delta r star or it's plus pd times minus delta r star so it's same thing this must match m r star but what is r star remember the generalized coordinate for r star is i delta t so this is on ith step and r star is uh, j steps up okay so this is already j steps up so r star uh, so we are trying to derive everything uh, in terms of uh, i and j all right uh, that gives the nodes uh, gives the node uh, location so expectation is m r star but r star is j times delta r star so from here we get uh, first equation pu minus pd equal to mj equation one now we have to write the equation for um, variance so for variance is probability times delta r star minus expectation of delta r star which is um, m r star correct then square plus if this happens then delta r star is uh, zero there is no no change in delta r star so it's actually 0 minus m r star square plus pd times minus delta r star minus m r star square this must be equal to v one step variance for delta r star okay we just have to simplify this expression so this is equal to by the way uh, there are uh, how many unknowns there are three probabilities that we are trying to find out but we just have two equations so what to do well there is one more equation which is obvious which is sum of the probabilities has to be one so we will use that somewhere down the line um very quickly we can uh, do something which is pu this del uh, r star is again j delta r star right so i can um <clears throat> take out uh, that delta r star square in fact so let me do one thing let me take out delta r square outside delta r star square 
I got PU 1 minus MJ square plus um, PM again MJ square plus PD so um, minus A minus B whole square is same as A plus B whole square so this is just 1 plus MJ square this is equal to now um, okay let's keep it as V but in the next step remember our uh, choice of delta R star it is square root of 3V so the square of delta R star would be 3V and V and V will get cancelled so I have this expression 3 times um, 3 okay 3 times 1 minus mj square plus 3 pm m square j square plus 3 pd 1 plus mj square is equal to 1. Okay. Now here, I will use that result, that sum of the probabilities uh, is equal to 1. Where I can use that? So if we look, collect the terms m square j square from all these three terms, uh, m square, if we take m square j square common, uh, then we would have uh, 3 times m square j square. Okay, I missed a probability here, pu. And then pu plus pm plus pd will become 1, right? So this will be... 3 times m square j square then there will be a minus 2 mj and um, plus 2 mj terms as well so I will get plus 3 times um, so first let's deal with the, these ones, okay? 3 times PU plus PD and the remaining uh, minus 6 PU MJ and uh, plus 6 PD MJ. So that is equal to minus 6 MJ. I take common. I get PU minus PD. This is equal to 1. All right? And um, so from this equation, so here from using the result that PU minus PD is equal to MJ from equation one, I get PU plus PD is uh, equal to 1 plus this is mj again right so 6 times m square j square minus 3 m square j square whole divided by 3 and this is equal to 1 plus 3 m square j square divided by 3 now all i need to do is use this equation and this equation to solve for um, uh, PU and PD, okay? So I'll get PU if I just add these two up and divide it by two. So I get PU equal to, if I add these two, I get one plus um, three MJ three MJ and then 3m square j square divided by 6 and I can write it like uh, this 1 by 6 plus mj plus m square j square divided by 2. Similarly I can get pd by subtracting uh, uh, the equation 1 from, from this equation and that is given as 
you can verify this is uh, very trivial divided by 6 1 by 6 plus m square j square minus mj divided by 2 and then the final probability pm which is simply 1 minus pu minus pd and that comes out as 2 by 3 minus j square m square all right so these are the probabilities uh, for the standard branching and you can follow the exact same procedure to uh, calculate the uh, probabilities for the uh, two non-standard branching types that we have so to reinforce the mean reversion tendency we will switch from standard branching to non-standard branching for example in this tree we are using the non-standard branching type b at node j equal to 2 this is uh, we do this when the interest rate is high and the non-standard standard branching version c at j equal to minus 2 that is for the low interest rate uh, environment this tree is completely symmetrical uh, um, around r star equal to 0 okay but how to find the uh, level of rates at which this non-standard branching uh, would kick in how to find those values so hull and white uh, give the values of uh, j max and j min all right for which we would switch from standard branching to non-standard branching and these values are obtained by setting the probability uh, formulas that we derived in the previous slide so the all the probability formulas must lie between 0 and 1 okay probabilities cannot be negative or greater than one so if we apply that condition for all the probability formulas that we derived uh, in the previous slide we will land with this condition so the condition is j max is given as smallest integer greater than minus 0.184 divided by m all right uh, if you recall m is the factor in the expectation calculation so we we already have that and then uh, this is negative 0.184 divided by m please recall that m is itself negative so this will be a positive value and we want the smallest integer which is greater than this uh, value once uh, we get that value at that value of j we will switch to non-standard branching okay this is for the uh, top edge when interest rates are high and since the we need we want to keep the tree symmetric so j min would be equal to minus j max all right so that's the minimum level of j and we will uh, um, do the non-standard branching version c which is for the low interest rate environment that will kick in at j min okay which is equal to minus j max so let's perform the stage one calculations uh, that we discussed so far uh, so this one example is taken from Hull's book uh, you can see that uh, we have the value of probabilities calculated at different nodes uh, in the table below along with the value of r star at different nodes and the conditions give, are given in this example sigma equal to 0 0.01 speed of mean reversion a is 0.1 and the time step we are considering is one uh, it's one year but it, it's one so let's perform all these calculations in excel so now comes the uh, stage two of the procedure so in this stage essentially what we are trying to do is uh, build a tree for r okay we got the tree for r star now we want to generate the tree for r and as discussed we will do that by calculating alpha at different time steps and we'll just bump the nodes of r star to get the nodes of r okay and how do we get the values of alpha which will obviously depend on the time step is uh, we will iteratively calculate alpha in such a way that the resulting tree that we get for r consistently uh, you know matches the prices of the uh, zero coupon bonds in the market so we will find alpha in such a way that the model price matches the market price so let's uh, see these uh, the calculations so let's look at a quick uh, demonstration of the calculations involved in building the interest rate tree under hull and white uh, two-stage procedure 
So here I have the term structure and this is the price of zero coupon bonds. All I did is uh, use the respective spot rate along with the maturity and discount it to get the zero coupon bond prices. And these are the details that I'm gonna use. So sigma uh, annual volatility is 0 0.01, speed up mean reversion is 0 0.1, and the model will be um, uh, based on uh, a time step of one year. So delta T is one year. So we can calculate uh, M. M is part of the expectation calculation. So that's given as um, e to the power minus a delta T minus one. So I have uh, renamed these uh, values for ease of calculation. So this is sigma and this is a and this is uh, del t. So here is uh, uh, m. You can also use the approximation which is uh, minus a delta t and then uh, calculate v. v is the variance of one step and uh, this is the formula. So I'm using the exact formula to calculate uh, v. Now delta r star, which is the um, size of the movement, is given as, given as square root of 3v. So that's uh, what it is, square root of 3 times v. Now we have to calculate at what value of j we have to switch from standard branching to non-standard branching. So j max is given as minus, one, minus 0.184 divided by uh, m, all right? and then take the uh, smallest integer greater than that number. So I'm using ceiling function in Excel to get the next integer which is bigger than this uh, this number. So that comes out, comes out as two. J minimum is, uh, so this tree is symmetric. For We are still uh, modeling R star. We have not gone to R yet. So this is symmetric. Um, j min is simply minus of j max so this is uh, minus 2 okay so we'll switch from standard to non-standard at j equal to 2 and j equal to minus 2 uh, and the two different types of switching that uh, that uh, we are familiar with okay we'll use that all right so next step is to calculate uh, or construct the tree for r star now when we are constructing the tree we need to have the probabilities uh, calculated at uh, every uh, branch right and also the value of r star okay so value of r star is simply given by its location wherever it is um, given by j and then we multiply the uh, size of the movement delta r star so j delta r star is the value of r star okay so we start with a zero Okay, remember the assumption, the initial condition is R star is equal to zero. And then if it is one notch uh, up, so if J equal to one, we just do J, J times uh, delta R star and delta R star is already calculated here. So this is this will be just one times delta R star. Similarly, two times delta R star and minus one time delta R star and minus two times delta R star. Now we need, so if R star is uh, uh, one of these five values, okay, at that point, what are the three probabilities? Okay, probability of up, middle, uh, and uh, down. So depending on the location, if J equals to two, that is where we switch from um, standard branching to non-standard branching. So if J equal to two, we apply equation three B, and this is the equation 3b this is applicable for uh, the the top edge all right so using this i have calculated the um, probabilities of up middle and down movement you can verify the from the equation so the inputs are uh, m is a constant it basically depends on j all right these probabilities depend on j so using 3b, I filled up this row and then using 3a, uh, so th these are standard branching. Also, you can see in the um, tree. So for standard branching, we use these formulas. So using these formulas, I filled up this uh, probabilities. Again, for the uh, bottom edge, we are using version c to fill up the probabilities. 
Okay. So tree for our start is complete. The next thing uh, I want to do is to build the tree for R. Now I will do that by calculating um, the values of alpha at different time steps and use these alphas to bump the uh, these nodes. Okay, so these are the value of uh, R star. Now I will shift these based on the time step and uh, the amount that I will shift is given by uh, these alphas. Okay, and how will I calculate alpha? I will calculate alpha so that the resulting tree that I get for R um, gives the model price for bonds equal to these market prices. Okay, so let's do that. Now, right now, so at this point, I am looking at node uh, A, right? At time t equal to 0, j equal to 0, so that corresponds to node A. At node A, the value of R should be, this is equal to, so, so this is alpha 0 is something that I have determined. So the value of R would be this is equal to value of R star, all right, plus alpha 0. Similarly, um, the values here for R would be, so this is equal to j equal to 1. At j equal to 1, the value of R star is this, then plus alpha 1. Okay, this is at time step uh, delta t. And I'll just uh, drag this. Similarly, here the value of um, R would be R star plus alpha 2 fix. Okay. So these would be the values of R. Now, I have not determined these uh, alphas, so I have to... Um, there is analytical uh, I mean equation that will give you the value of alpha uh, as given in the book but here I'm uh, for the sake of convenience I'm going to use a goal seek function so Excel will find that value and typically we use goal seek when we have a non-linear problem uh, so there is no direct formula for this but in this case there is direct formula for alpha uh, please uh, refer to the book uh, if you want to see uh, the direct formula but just for convenience I'm going to use goal seek Okay, so this is the tree for R. Now, the way we are going to calculate it is, so let's say, um, so the typical process would be, we would uh, look at, let's say, the uh, uh, zero coupon bond maturing at one year. So we'll discount that $1 based on the uh, discount rates on the tree. And then at time t equal to 0, the price of the 0 coupon bond should be equal to this, 0.95. Alright. And then for we will look at a 0 coupon bond maturing at time uh, 2. And then, so that will be here, right? And then we will discount it uh, two steps back, all the way back to A, where the price of that bond should be 0.89. All right, and the way we will discount uh, will depend on uh, the path that we take and the associated interest rates uh, in those states. But instead of doing that again and again, we don't need to go back uh, all the way up to A. We can store the intermediate calculations, right? So that means anything that comes uh, via B, right, for example, will have to be multiplied by the probability between A to B and the discount rate that is uh, sitting at uh, B, right? So why not multiply the probability from A to B and the discounting factor applicable at B and store it so that it can be used for all um, uh, inductions uh, in future, okay? So we, we use a term called as forward induction to do this, uh, but essentially it's the same, okay? So yeah, let's... Uh, uh, find the value of alpha 0 and alpha 1 and then I'll leave uh, alpha 2 as an exercise uh, for you. Okay, so next step is so since we have the um, values of R, okay, um, but these are not final values, it will depend on the choice of uh, alphas. The corresponding disc one period discount factor can be found 
um, easily. So at uh, time t equal to zero, the discounting factor is uh, e to the power. So in in all these uh, nodes, if we are going, if you are taking one step discounting, it will just be e to the power minus uh, whatever your r is times delta t, and delta t is one year. Okay. So that this these are the discounting factors uh, applicable at different nodes uh, for one year time period. Now here interest rate is zero, so this is one, and then this is just e to the power minus this. That all that's all we are doing. Okay, these are the discount discounting factors. Okay, now first, uh, so immediately we can find out the value of alpha zero. R star has an initial value of zero, and that's the mean level. Okay, in this whole tree what should be alpha zero so that you know r is zero plus alpha zero so essentially the first short rate uh, r um, at time zero is alpha zero okay because this is zero plus alpha zero so what this value should be this one is easy okay because we are talking about one time step uh, so one year for one year the spot rate available is this one 5.0939 so alpha zero is exactly that. So this is equal to this value. All right. So in our tree for R, um, the initial rate has to be uh, this and any bond that is maturing at time uh, one. So here. Okay. So if a bond is maturing at time one, it pays $1. How will you find the value? It's $1 probability of A to B plus $1 probability of A to C plus probability of $1 A to D and these respective terms will be all discounted by the same discounting rate uh, that is sitting at A, right? And this discounting rate is 5.0939%. Uh, so all these probabilities will add up to 1 and then you will get the exact same uh, rate here. All right, this is straightforward. Now how to find out alpha 1? For alpha 1, we need to look at the this bond okay which is maturing at time t and this is the value of the bond at node a or present value of the bond before finding that we can do so as i mentioned right we can store the uh, intermediate calculations for node b c d um, in this uh, in this form okay so essentially what we are doing here is so anything that comes via b to a will get multiplied by the probability of a to b and the discounting factor applicable um, uh, uh, at a all right so here i have multiplied probability of a to b so a sits at j equal to zero and this is p up multiplied by the discounting factor uh, that uh, is applicable at a okay so this is you can say this is the uh, pv of node b all right present value of node b similarly i can uh, calculate the present value of node uh, c which is again the probability um, if i highlight this the pro the probability of from a to c which is the middle path from node 0 okay from node 0 then multiplied by uh, the this uh, discounting factor applicable at a okay so i calculate these and store them for ease of uh, calculations all right now what i will do is what uh, so uh, if a zero coupon bond matures at time uh, two then the model price should match this price okay what is the uh, price of that zero coupon bond at time a the price of the zero coupon bond at time a would be okay so the we are looking at the zero coupon bond um, maturing at time two now that could be sitting on one of these nodes e f g h i 
So from E, F, G, it can come to uh, B, all right? And when it comes to B, it will be discounted uh, using this discounting factor that is applicable uh, for B, all right? When it reaches B, from B to A, we already have the PV calculated here, all right? Similarly, if something comes to C, uh, so right now alpha 1 is 0, so that's why you're seeing this as 1. Uh, but alpha 1 will be something, we need to determine that. And uh, that is the discounting fa factor of applicable for C. So anything that comes to C uh, will be uh, discounted by uh, this discounting factor. And then from C to A, we have already uh, kept it and stored it, right? So essentially, the value of a zero coupon bond maturing at time 2 uh, and the, we are trying to find the PV of that is nothing but the product of this and this vector. All right. So that's the beauty of, uh, you know, uh, doing it in this way. We don't have to, um, you know, calculate PV uh, at A by multiplying these individual probabilities and discounting, uh, sequential discounting. We don't have to do that. So we can store the immediate uh, intermediate uh, values and we can reuse that for all future calculations. So, uh, so these are already bumped up by the, um, uh, okay, For so we have bumped up the value of R using uh, alpha 1 already here, and this gives rise to these discounting uh, factors. All I need to do is take the sum product of these, and that should match the zero coupon bond price maturing at time 2. So, equal to sum product this comma this now to get this value what should be alpha 1 to get this value equal to um, this value what should be alpha 1 so I can use uh, goal seek set this cell value should be 0 0.8905 to two by changing this cell okay so that gives me the value of alpha 1 now alpha 1 is the uh, adjustment by which this entire uh, all the nodes at time t equal to 1 get shifted up uh, from the r star uh, values okay so that's it. And similarly, you can uh, calculate the value of alpha 2 by looking at a security of zero coupon bond that matures at time 3. So we will match this market price with the model price. Okay. Uh, so for that, you have to again uh, look at the uh, calculations in, in this layer. All right. What comes to E? So there is a one possibility from B to E. So you have to start from just give you an example uh, b is j equal to 1 and we are looking at different paths for e so it is just from b to e so from b to e is this probability pu okay and then you have to multiply the discounting factor similarly if you're looking at f there are two paths one for uh, from b the middle path and then one from c which is the up path so accordingly, you have to take those two probabilities. Um, so it will be this probability that is from B to F. And then uh, from C to F is the from zero to up. So this prob these two probabilities you have to take. Okay. And then store uh, these values, uh, the PVs, and then accordingly um, find out the value of alpha 2. So that's uh, all for now. This is Satya from Pixel Tales. Thanks for watching.